So the spring season brings many celebrations to our campus, uh, including this Founders Day weekend and the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. Faculty and students will also soon be celebrating the end of finals and the beginning of summer break, which I'm sure they're excited about. As the academic year comes to an end, we'll also be celebrating the completion of successful seasons for performing arts and athletics. Uh, and some of those service learning teams will be out leaving for uh, long planned summer trips. Students will move for the summer, leaving campus for internships, for jobs, for adventures. This weekend really is kind of the beginning of that time of celebration at Southwestern. It's a busy time to be sure, but it's a happy time, and there's much to celebrate and look forward to. As we kick off this season of celebration, Founders Weekend allows us time as a community to reflect, um, to appreciate the many contributions of our alumni, faculty, and close friends. And what perfect timing, right? Just because, or just before we celebrate the accomplishments of another class, the class of 2022. There's no doubt in my mind that some of this year's graduates will earn their place in this hall at some future point. The Halls of Fame will celebrate this weekend, hold high the wonderful people who, in their good work, strengthen the identity of our college. Yes, it's the students and the alumni, our faculty and our staff, our people, it's our people who make Southwestern such a uniquely special place. Tonight, we celebrate three builders who in their lives work and service demonstrate the values of Southwestern College, Jim Reed, class of 1964, Mona Petroco Klein, class of 1974, and posthumously, the beloved Wallace Gray. At Southwestern College, we are known for being builders, and the three inductees honor, we honor tonight are great builders of the human spirit. Through their work and service, they have encouraged and defended. They have shown openness and empathy. In each inductee, we find an example of how our college is committed individually and collectively to making a place a better world. That's what we are called to do in leadership. We serve with our hands, with our feet, from our hearts. We see that tonight in these inductees, three leaders with huge hearts and a drive to serve others through listening, advocacy, and teaching. So Jim, Mona, Wallace's family and friends, we are honored to be able to recognize you this evening. My sincere appreciation to you and your family and friends for being here this evening, as from all of us. Lastly, I would thank the students who are in the room. You make us proud. I hope being here tonight is inspirational for you. You each have what it takes to earn a place in the Southwestern Hall of Fame. So work to serve others through your leadership. Endeavor to build that spirit of those around you and you will make the college proud. You already have. Congratulations on your academic success this year. Thank you for your hard work and leadership on campus. Thank you for being builders. The mission statement for the Social Sciences Division is to promote multiple approaches to understanding ourselves, others, and the forces that shape society to equip students for reflective engagement in the world. We are here tonight to celebrate that work of equipping. It is work in progress for those of us who are here at SC, and it is the fruit of that work evidenced in the meaningful careers of the Hall of Fame inductees. As we begin, uh, we would like to recognize our previous leaders in Service Hall of Fame for the Social Sciences, the inductees that are with us from previous years. Um, if you would please stand so we could give you our round of applause. Carl. <laughs> Tonight we have three honorary categories. Pi Gamma Mu, Social Sciences Honors, and the Leaders in Service Hall of Fame. We will begin with induction and honor cords for Pi Gamma Mu, which is the National Honor Society for the Social Sciences. At Southwestern College, we hold the distinction that this, honors, this National Honors Society was started as a joint effort between Southwestern and the College of William and Mary in 1924. We are the Alpha chapter. We are pleased to be able to honor students who are studying and preparing to be persons who make a meaningful contribution in our world. On behalf of your professors, students, I want you to know 
that even though much of the hard work you are doing academically is private and it goes unseen, we know you are doing the work. And it is a gift to become comfortable with working hard, with giving your best, even if only you fully understand the effort required. As it is with most things in life, it is true with your academic endeavors, you get in what you put out. We know you have invested your, and applied yourself during your time at Southwestern, and it is a joy tonight to recognize that work. We have invited students to join Pi Gamma Mu who have the, met the criteria of 20 hours of social sciences credit, maintaining a 3.1 GPA, and tonight we are happy to acknowledge those who have accepted our invitation and those who are graduating with Pi Gamma Mu honors. So at this time, I want to invite our faculty advisor for Pi Gamma Mu, Dr. Cheryl Rood, as well as the student president of Pi Gamma Mu, Sheka Olenga, to come forward. So we have 10 awesome <laughs> women tonight that we are going to induct and celebrate as graduates. We're not an anti-men organization, but I, we are pretty proud of these um, ladies. And as several people have said, um, we, these are the people that we think we'll be meeting here again someday as, as our Hall of Fame people. We're really proud of you guys and um, honored to be a part of your lives. So, as I call your name, if you'll please come forward and accept, these are our inductees. We have, we have invited uh, six students that have met our qualifications and have accepted our invitation. So if you'll come forward and accept your membership certificate and pen from Sheka. All right, Lydia Bumgarner. Lydia is an early child, childhood education major, major, sorry, and she has a minor in Christian Discipleship Studies. Welcome. <laughs> Next, we have Mallory Graves. Mallory is majoring in communication with an emphasis in general communication. Welcome, Mallory. Odyssey Mann. Odyssey is a philosophy and religion major, and she's minoring in music. <laughs> Olivia Martello. Olivia is a health sciences major, and she is minoring in psychology. Emily Robinson. Emily is a music theater major and she is minoring in philosophy and religion. <laughs> and our last inductee is Ashley Soderlund. Ashley is majoring in computer science and digital arts with an emphasis in computer science and she has a minor in Christian discipleship studies. And then we're saying, thank you, Shakeup. We are um, celebrating and looking forward to graduation for four of our students. Um, so if, when I introduce you and call your name and your professor that's still, uh, giving you your honor cord, if you will come up here also. Emma Bate. Emma has asked Dr. Ray, myself, to present her cord. Emma is graduating with a BA in mathematics with secondary <laughs> licensure. And after graduation, she has a job. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I get extra applause for that. Uh, Emma will be teaching math at Winfield High School. So. Mallory Graves. Mallory has asked me to present her cord. Mallory is graduating with a BA in communication, emphasis in general communication, and she also has a job. So she will be moving to Ada, Oklahoma, and she will be working full-time with the Chickasaw Nation. Oh. Emily Robinson. Emily's breaking our streak here. She's going to do something a little different. Emily has asked Reverend Just to present her chord. Emily is graduating with a BFA in music theater and a minor in philosophy and religion. And after graduating, she's gonna take a gap year to travel, pursue performance opportunities, and apply for grad school. Congratulations. <laughs> and our last graduate for this evening is Brooklyn Tegler. Brooklyn 
has asked Dr. Negley to present her court. Brooklyn is graduating with a BA in psychology and with a minor in criminal justice. And after graduation, she has been accepted to grad school. Brooklyn is heading to Georgia Southern University to pursue a master's degree in criminal justice with an emphasis in criminology. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Rude. Congratulations, students. Our second category this evening is the Social Sciences Honors Program. The Social Sciences Division launched an honors program in the fall of 2014. The program has enrichment opportunities um, with special classes as well as outside the traditional classroom from enhanced learning trips to community building social activities. To graduate with honors requires competing, completing six honors courses at a level of B or higher and successfully writing and defending an honors capstone project or thesis. This year, we have one student graduating with honors in the social sciences, Jesus Flores. Jesus, if you come forward. And his, and his advisor, Dr. Jacob Negri. Jesus is a psychology major and he was also active in the discipleship program at Southwestern. His honors thesis um, was, pardon me, entitled, The Correlation Between Parenting Style Behaviors and College Major Choices and Perspectives. Next fall, uh, and he was uh, advised in this effort by Dr. Jacob Nagley. Next fall, Jesus will be pursuing a master's at Oklahoma State University uh, with goals to pursue a PhD in school psychology. Congratulations, Jesus. And so tonight, we come to the highlight of our evening um, for three persons who have not forgotten this errand of social sciences and continued to serve in our world so well. We are thankful for their lives of service that help us all get a glimpse of what living amply with great vision and with a spirit of hope and achievement for the world looks like. The Southwestern College Leaders in Service Hall of Fame for the Social Sciences was established in 2009 to honor alumni and friends who have taken their education and enriched our world by offering their time and talents as leaders in service to others. It is right and fitting that we recognize these worthy individuals for their efforts, and the college is privileged to be a part of this honor. I would like to call your attention to the beautiful glass creations on the table right here. These one-of-a-kind awards will be given annually to Leaders in Service Hall of Fame inductees. They are handcrafted by Mr. Scott Hartley, class of 97, a Southwestern science major who went on to use his artistic talents and his knowledge of science to become a master glass blower. We are fortunate to be able to give these unique gifts to our inductees to permanently remind them of their place in our Hall of Fame. And so, it is my privilege to introduce this year's class, which, by the way, was actually from 2019-20, so we have waited <laughs> two to three long years to do this, so we are happy to. So first, is Jim Reed, class of 1964. Jim graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Religion and Philosophy and has spent his career building groups and institutions. While at Southwestern, Jim was active in the Methodist student movement and campus ministry has been a lifelong love of his. He has walked, worked throughout his ministry to strengthen the presence of the church on campus. Jim served several local churches in Kansas. Leon Rosalia Charge, Associate at Trinity UMC Hutchinson, Grace UMC Winfield, Woodlawn UMC Derby, and First UMC Manhattan. He also served as Council Director for the Kansas West Conference and Superintendent of the Hutchinson District. For 22 years, he served as Chaplain in the Kansas National Guard. He was a member of the General Conference of the United Methodist Church in 1984 and 1986, and of the South Central Jurisdictional Conference from 1980 through 1996. Jim also served on the Board of Trustees at Southwestern for 12 years. Being a builder on campus during the 60s engendered a commitment to mercy and justice ministries. 
In each of his appointments as pastor in the United Methodist Church, he has helped create agencies that have addressed the issues of the poor and the disenfranchised. Examples would be the creation of Shepherd's Crossing, an ecumenical helping agency, the Flint Hills Community Clinic, and the Micah Society, all in Manhattan, Kansas. Jim and his wife Sherry have two sons, Brian and Aaron. Jim, if you would come forward and receive your gift. Let's give Jim a round of applause. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you don't let a Methodist preacher get this. Oh my goodness. First to uh, be in the same time with uh, honoring Wallace Gray, what you must understand is that I took several courses from Wallace and uh, I still remember the logic box and uh, I still remember a whole lot of other kinds of things. So it is an honor, Ina and your family, to, to be here at the same time. Uh, and then I have to say, I did not know Pi Gamma Mu was going to be honored. I am living proof that a male has been a part. <laughs> As a matter of fact, my senior year, I was president of Pi Gamma Mu. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have written a story about its origin, which is a takeoff of Dean Allen's understanding. And I don't know whether any of you have ever seen that thing. You haven't seen it? Cheryl, I think I may have a copy. And, and it, is, it is an embarrassment to all. <laughs> but anyway. You forget how much you love a place, this library, this very room, and off through the stacks, how often going through there, just kind of the smell, if you will, of stale books, <laughs> but wonderful. And across the way, if I was as tall as, as uh, the Wilkies, I could see it from here, but I can't, but it's the mound. Only Dean Allen and those of us who call ourselves mound builders get it. In the early 60s, it was on this campus that we went through crisis after crisis. It's October. It's October of 62. Can you imagine that? 60 years ago. That the Cuban Missile Crisis was happening and we were not sure if we would get up the next morning. And then the assassination of President Kenny. Not only the assassination of Kennedy, but then the civil rights movement and, and what happened during that time. That was, that was why we were all here. And during those crises, we struggled and we learned. And those of us in that time took a course called Social and Economic Problems from Dr. Gary Hayes, a graduate here, and he's out in the Scholars Hall of Fame. We called it Sock and Eck. And that course ate our lunch. And yet we learned and we became grounded and we became builders. We became servants. In those days, we had phenomenal opportunities. Like I spent a semester in Washington, D.C. at American University, a political science hands-on type of thing that was for, just, I know that Carl Martin was in that program also. It was just a phenomenal thing. And Sherry, my wife, spent the same semester at Drew University going to the United Nations twice a week to study international relations. Off of those experiences, we became builders. It does not escape me 
that what we call ourselves builders is the spirit to which we strive to become. So we're in crisis again. Crisis in the United Methodist Church, crisis in our nation, crisis in a tragic war in the Ukraine. But whatever the crisis is or is to be, we shall never forget that as leaders, as a faithful, hopeful people seeking justice for all of God's people, we are builders. It's great to be here and to see you, and, and uh, this is kind of cool. I like it a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Our second inductee tonight is uh, Mona Petroka Klein. From class of 1974, she graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in mathematics. From her graduation from Southwestern College, Mona earned a Master of Science teaching degree at University of Wyoming in 1976. She then taught secondary math and science in Wisconsin and Colorado from 1976 to 1981. Subsequently, she took additional classes in computer programming and began her career in information technologies for a major telecommunications company headquartered in Denver, Colorado. For the next 30 years, Mona advanced from a, num a member of the technical staff to staff manager, project manager, and process manager coach while earning an MBA from the University of Northern Colorado and a project management certificate from the University of Denver. Her volunteer activities include, included serving as an officer for the Colorado chapter of U.S. West Women, an advocacy group for women in telecommunications, and filling a variety of roles in support of monthly meetings and annual symposiums for the Mile High chapter of the Project Management Institute. During the time that Mona served on the board of directors of Catholic Charities Diocese of Pueblo, she became more aware of the existence of human trafficking in the United States and specifically in Colorado. Developing an interest in combating human trafficking and helping persons who have experienced human tra trafficking, Mona led a group of women in establishing the Alliance to Combat Human Trafficking Pueblo in 2013. The organization supports collaboration amongst local service providers and works to improve the quality of services provided to those touched by human trafficking. Mona continues to actively serve on the steering committee and function as newsletter editor and programs co-chair. She also serves as liaison to Colorado Front Range Anti-Trafficking Coalition. In 2017, Mona was certified as a facilitator for the Colorado Human Trafficking Council curriculum. Through December 20, 2019, she has conducted 18 training sessions for almost 340 service providers and members of the general public. She was appointed to a three-year term on the Colorado Human Trafficking Council by Colorado Governor Jared Paulus in September 2019 as a representative of a regional citywide human trafficking task force or coalition. Mona, if you would come forward, let's give her a round of applause. Um, I didn't come forewarned that I was supposed to be able to speak a little bit, but um, yeah, as you can hear from my conver the description, I'm a perpetual student, and I think Southwestern helped instill that in me, that um, a love of learning, it, does, it didn't matter. Like I chose math as a major because I didn't type well, so it wasn't good to be a history major or an English major, but I still think back to, and Catherine will um, remember Dr. Inholm and Mrs. Cope and all the things they taught us in um, college that still I use when I do any kind of written or spoken communication. I go back to the things I learned at Southwestern. But again, that love of learning and the fact that life changes and we have the tools because of our broad exposure at Southwestern to make those changes, to grow with what interests, uh, interests us. And um, I think Southwestern for that is a, a small school that um, helped me live a very rewarding, big life. And so thank you all. And it's so great to see everybody here. And I, I do have to say to the math major, I was a math major. So now the challenge is that you should be up here someday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank 
Thank you, Mona. Our third inductee tonight we recognize posthumously. But as we sit here in the library, in a space where Wallace Gray spent so much time teaching and learning, I hope we can all say share in feeling his presence with us this evening. Wallace Gray spent his life as a college teacher and United Methodist minister. Wallace was educated at Central College in Missouri and Southern Methodist and Vanderbilt universities. He enjoyed language study, Latin, French, German, Greek, and Japanese. He was proud of the two books he translated from Japanese into English. He taught at Southwestern College for 40 years. In addition to Southwestern, he also taught at six universities in the United States, Kiryushu University in Japan, as well as at the Pastor Supply School in Kansas City and Dallas. Wallace delighted in the brilliance and success of others, but he also spent many hours with struggling students. He was enthusiastic about new ideas, from the logic machine that he built to computers when they came into general use, as anyone remembers who came upon him on campus when he shared his latest interest, often at some length. In answer to the question, where can you go from Winfield, Kansas, Wallace would say, anywhere. And so he lived and taught in Japan and Hawaii and visited 63 countries on five continents. Accepting on behalf of Wallace tonight is his daughter, Tara, who is a member of the class of 1981, and she was inducted in Southwestern College Hall of Fame, Scholars Hall of Fame, in 2018. Tara, if you would come forward, let's give Wallace and family a applause. First thing to know about my dad is he didn't walk alone in more than one sense. My mother was a formidable force behind my father. <laughs> Working with him to teach courses on Hawaii, including the Aloha Seminar, Hawaii or Bust, in 65, revising many of his 200 manuscripts, and even typing her extensive notes from a course she took so that he could teach his class from her notes. <laughs> Daddy had many, many ideas. Ina strove mightily to help him implement the good ones. He especially, the things I remember about my dad most are that he loved to read, write, and talk. <laughs> he especially loved to teach. He taught 40 years at Southwestern College. In his free time, summers, sabbaticals, and so forth, he taught at Vanderbilt, the University of Tennessee, Southern Methodist University, Perkins Theological Seminary, St. Paul's Seminary, Friends University, Wichita State, and as already mentioned, Kitakyushu University in Japan. Mother asked him one time, how many students have you taught? Being loquacious, back came one table, three graphs, one nine-page single-space description. <laughs> I learned that Wallace had taught eight to 14 classes per year, with classes ranging between 12 and 39 students. In total, he taught students numbering 5,919. I wondered at first why he counted his students. He literally went through the grade book counting his students. I wondered why he counted his students, and then I realized because every student counts. Somewhere I'm sure there's a gravestone that says more than Wallace Gray. It says, here lies Dr. Gray, a teacher to the last. He died caring. And care he did. He loved his wife to distraction. He loved his daughters and grandsons. And if he were here today, he'd be off loving a great grandson and newborn, Robin Wallace. <laughs> Our 
Well, on behalf of the faculty and administration, to our Pi Gamma Mu students and honor students, thank you for your thoughtful engagement in your studies. Thank you for the risk uh, to put those concepts into practice outside the classroom. Thank you for representing our college so well, and thank you for the work you've yet to do. As has been said many times, we trust you will one day be up here. On behalf of the faculty administration to our Hall of Fame inductees, thank you for your contribution in service to our world. Thank you for the example you have set. Thank you for being builders. Thank you for your heartfelt connection to and continued support of, South of Southwestern College. 